Hello everyone, and welcome to another video in my Future Story Speculation mini-series. Today, I want to talk about a return to Sumeru, and the stories we could have there after Snezhnaya. I'll be going over potential stories about Nahida, Apep, the Harbingers, and some other ideas that I have. Now, this video does contain spoilers for the quests listed on screen now, so if you haven't done those, you have been warned. With all that said though, let's get right into the video. Starting off, let's talk about the Dendro Archon Lesser Lord Kusanali, more commonly known as Nahida. While she isn't the first Dendro Archon, she and everyone else believes that she was. During the Sumeru Archon quests, she was forced to erase any record of the previous Dendro Archon, Greater Lord Rukidavada, in order to cleanse Erminsul of forbidden knowledge. However, even though most people forgot about Ruka Devada, the Traveler still remembers her, as they are not from Tavat. Now, I believe a quest with Nahida after Snezhnaya would involve her confronting the mysteries of her past. As for why she would do this, perhaps she could read the Traveler's mind and learn about Ruka Devada. After finding out, she may want to investigate the history of the Dendro Archon and the incidents surrounding Forbidden Knowledge. Together, we could travel around Sumeru or even look into Ermansul to learn more about Rukidavada, King Deshret, Nabu Malikata, Apep, and how forbidden knowledge affected them all. Through our investigations, we may even learn that there was a Dendro Archon before Rukidavada as well. When she used her power to fight against the forbidden knowledge brought by King Deshret, she may have done similar to Nahida, erasing the previous Dendro Archon to save Ermansul. After all, there have been three incidents regarding forbidden knowledge in Tavat. The first was caused by the Dragon King Nibelung and was stopped by the Divine Nails. The second was caused by King Deshret and was stopped with the help of Rukidavada. The third occurred during the Cataclysm and was stopped by Nahida. Still though, forbidden knowledge survived in Tavat after the second incident, so perhaps Ermansul was not the answer here. Getting back on track though, a quest with Nahida could give us more information about King Deshret and Nabu Malikata in general. We could get flashbacks that show us what they looked like and how they acted together. With Nabu Malikata, we could even learn more about the Sili. Perhaps we will make a return to the Eternal Oasis with Nahida and investigate the Divine Nail that was used to create it. We'll likely want to investigate the Divine Nail because of the first Forbidden Knowledge incident anyways, so this would tie in perfectly. Currently, Divine Nails are one of the most mysterious bits of lore in Genshin, so who better to accompany us on a mission to investigate them than the God of Wisdom herself? We could finally learn about how they work and why they are so powerful. After all, the Divine Nail in Sumeru was responsible for its desertification, and even affected the Dendro Sovereign. Speaking of the Dendro Sovereign, let's move on and talk about Apep. After the Divine Nail fell, Apep and its children were forced to adapt to the new conditions in Sumeru. Its children, the Wainut, no longer flew in the sky, but burrowed underground instead. Now, Apep is the oldest of the sovereigns we have met so far. They ruled over Sumeru before the Primordial One even came to Devat and fought in the war that came after. During this war, the Primordial Ones stole a part of Apep's Dendro authority, causing them to be much weaker. Still, the Dragon King Nibelung had a plan to use forbidden knowledge against the Usurpers to take their power back. Unfortunately though, Nibelung would be killed in battle, but the plan didn't end here. Apep didn't give up on the idea to use forbidden knowledge against Celestia, eventually leading to them making a deal with King Deshret. They would allow Deshret to build a grand civilization in its domain, but when Deshret died, Apep would gain all of the knowledge he accumulated and his elemental power. Eventually, King Deshret would pass away, and Apep swallowed him whole. However, things didn't go to plan, as the forbidden knowledge he held corrupted the Sovereign. They were able to adapt to the pain and deal with it, but they were unable to analyze any of the knowledge they had obtained. 
As a result of the forbidden knowledge, the creatures that resided within Apep's Heart of Oasis would be corrupted as well, and some even escaped into Sumeru. Apep dealt with the forbidden knowledge for thousands of years, but when Nahida removed it from Ermansul, it left a large void in Apep. Nahida realized that this could put Sumeru in danger, as Apep's elemental energy could spill out and turn the entirety of Sumeru into a rainforest and ruin the ecosystem. After finding some of the creatures that had escaped from Apep, we were able to heal the Sovereign and save Sumeru. Apep then calmed down, realizing that destroying the Seven and humanity would serve no purpose. Instead, they chose to watch from afar. So, how exactly will Apep come back into the story? Well, as I said, they're observing from afar, so if things start to heat up, they may be able to see what's going on. Apep could learn about the events that happened in Shnezhnaya's Archon quests, making them realize that some of the Archons want to rebel against Celestia as well. As a result, they could work to gather knowledge that would be helpful against the Primordial One in an upcoming fight. They could also meet up with Nahida, perhaps in a smaller human form, to come up with a plan to protect Sumeru. Given the circumstances, Nahida may realize that it would be wisest to return the Dendra Authority to Apep. Still, she wouldn't just give it away, and Nahida may test Apep to see if they are wise enough to protect Sumeru and fight against Celestia. Knowing how old Apep is, I doubt they would have a problem with this, but we still may have to help them with this in a quest. After this though, Nihida could willingly return her authority, as it would be the wisest choice in the situation. Like the previous Archons, this would be related to her ideal of wisdom. Moving on though, it's once again time to talk about which Harbingers we could see on a return to Sumeru. For the first Harbinger, let's talk about Piero. From what we know, Conria is located underneath Sumeru, and since he is from Conria, it would make sense for Piero to investigate the area. We could travel to ruins related to Conria with him to learn more about the Cataclysm and Conria in general, and he could even be the one who leads us into Conria for the first time. Now, the next Harbinger I want to talk about is Datore. He is from Sumeru, and even though he is likely no longer welcome at the Academia, there is still something he could do. He could potentially join the Traveler and Piero in investigating the Ruin Golems found around Sumeru and other potential ruins. After all, Dottori has a keen interest in technology, so he would be able to make use of the ancient Conrian tech. He could even help build newer and better Ruin Golems for a conflict against Celestia, which I would love to see. Though, if Dottori does return, we could see a fight between him and Wanderer, so we will probably have to keep those two away from each other. Anyways, the next Harbinger I want to discuss is Columbina. She is heavily theorized to have connections to Celestia, and so is a certain god from Sumeru, Nabu Malikata. As such, Columbina could join us in investigating the Divine Nails, while also giving us more information on Nabu Malikata and the Sealy. Now then, the last Harbinger I want to talk about is Pulsanella. Originally, I didn't think he would show up outside of Snezhnaya, but then I noticed the similarities he has with Nahida, and especially Layla. He has pointy ears, meaning he could be an elf, but his eye color matches Layla, and so does his color palette. Perhaps him appearing in Sumeru could lead to an explanation for these similarities. We could even get Alice appearing here as well, bringing more lore on the elves in general. Now then, for the final section of this video, I want to talk about potential expansions we could get for Sumeru. Starting with the hole up north, this is where Baida Harbor would be located. This harbor is located across from Fontaine, and based on its name, it likely resides in the desert part of Sumeru. Of course, this doesn't mean there won't be any forest up here, as there is still room for both more forest and desert. As for the upper half of this hole, I think that would just be water. It could hold a bit more Fontaine, but I think it would be more fitting to have a bigger area of water here. This expansion could also hold a few more villages in Sumeru, including the one where Layla is from. Now, to the south, there is room for both more forest and desert. 
An expansion down here could connect both areas to the ocean, potentially allowing us to sail between Port Ormos and Liwa Harbor. There is also room for more desert to the west. We know that Natlan is to the west of Sumeru, but not how far west, so there still could be space to fill here. Perhaps there could be some water separating the two nations, just so that we don't get an overwhelming amount of desert to explore. Anyways, that's pretty much it for my ideas on future stories that take place in Sumeru. If you want to see more videos like this, I recommend my videos on a return to Mondstadt, hints of the Hexen Circle, a return to Liwa, and a return to Inazuma. I also recommend my videos on Sumeru lore, including Flower of Paradise Lost, Forukasha's Glow, and Kusanali and Ruka Devada. I would love to hear what ideas you all have about future stories in Sumeru in the comments below as well. Anyways, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Sources and further readings are also in the description if you want to check them out. I hope you all have an amazing day, and I'll see you all in the next video.